Hello Watch Enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. The summer is soon upon us and, unlike last year, holidays might actually be a serious possibility. This means that many of us will or already have planned trips to a myriad of hot, sunny and hopefully relaxing locations, yet for the watch lovers amongst us, this raises some thoughts. Just which watch is perfect for a trip abroad or at least away from one's home? Well, as a starting point, a dive watch of some kind is generally the best choice. These provide the water resistance, toughness and timing capabilities to make travel worry-free and to accommodate all the activities one expects from the summer. Now, each year I produce a video recommending some of the top new picks from the year for use over the summer, but this time I reckon a rethink is needed. You see, in my mind there are a few criteria which separate a good summer dive watch from your other pieces, good dive watches though they may be. These are as follows. First and foremost, a summer dive watch has to be something you won't have to worry about either mechanically or physically. This can be because the watch is cheap, although a broken watch is an inconvenience even if it was cheap, or preferably if it's simply resilient. This is why, beautiful though they are, vintage watches generally make rather poor companions in this regard. Secondly, a watch for a summer destination needs to be either affordable or understated enough not to put one in harm's way or to risk theft. On the milder end of things, one can simply lose one's watch, but on the more worrying end, one can be put at serious risk in the process. Of course, you already know about the obvious choices from the world's luxury brands, so on the whole, I'm going to stick to lesser known offerings to give you a certain anonymity whilst traveling. The third attribute is probably the most obvious, but also still worth stating, a pairing of high water resistance with versatility in terms of looks. The ideal summer watch is one which you never have to take off. Ultimately, nobody wants to leave their pride and joy in a hotel room because they're going to do an activity which the watch would be ill-suited for, or because they're worried about sweating through the leather strap, for example. With that in mind, I'd like to begin at the more affordable end of the spectrum. But before I begin, please remember to like, subscribe and to hit the bell icon to always catch the latest episodes here on YouTube. Also remember to follow us on Instagram to always know about these pieces in advance, and of course to head over to watchchronicler.com where you'll find most of the content from Watch Chronicler. But without any further ado, let's begin with the first watch. And the first watch I'd like to discuss is, in my opinion, the perfect antithesis of the overly styled, very extensive range of fundamentally very similar dive watches released by Seiko in recent years. This is the Seiko King Samurai, a watch originally released in 2004 in simple samurai form, but which as of last year has been available with a curious combination. The toughness and affordability of Seiko's entry-level dive watch range, with the key high-end features seen in the past by Seiko as unnecessary frivolities. By these I mean the replacement of the practical but easily marked aluminium bezel insert with a near unscratchable ceramic one, the basic dial with a far better finished one, and the Hardlex Crystal, a tough but soft idiosyncrasy of Seiko, with a sapphire one with internal anti-reflective coating. Together, these seemingly minor alterations make a much more complete package out of Seiko's only real 21st century dive watch design. However, there's much more than that to justify the £160 price increase over the normal Samurai. On the face of things, the King Samurai shares an awful lot with its cheaper relative. A good thing, I reckon. As such, the case is just under 44mm, which is admittedly large, but with a 48mm lug-to-lug -lug length, it should still fit most wrists, particularly with a very reasonable 12.8mm thickness. The design of this watch also deserves the spotlight, because unlike most radically modern watch designs, this one is very harmonious and elegant, with brushed and polished surfaces and a knurled crown and bezel to be grippy with no major aesthetic impact. In practical terms as a holiday watch, the King Samurai could probably outdo any other watch on this list on a cost-to-feature ratio. Aside from a dive-rated 200m water resistance rating and the refinements already mentioned, this watch uses the Seiko 4R35 automatic movement. Whilst this movement is fairly basic in design, as well as not having the extended power reserves we've seen from Seikos of late, it's absolutely bulletproof with very little drop in performance by comparison to those more expensive counterparts, and rather importantly for a watch of this type, it's much cheaper to service. In some ways, you could argue that the King Samurai is a very mature watch, with beautifully brushed hands and a sober appearance, yet I reckon that it's the combination of reasonable price with extensive features and a modest appearance which makes it perfect for summer travel. What's also brilliant is that if you don't feel that you need the new features or you want a more simple watch, you can find the normal Samurai for well under £400. A real bargain. Sitting above the Seiko, we enter into the very varied world of Swiss-made dive watches, and there are some real classics available from Squale or Satina, to name only two. But at this point, I'd like to provide something for those wanting perhaps the most refined execution of a conventional style dive watch, the Steinhardt Ocean 39. The smaller 39mm version of Steinhardt's Ocean 1 has been a popular choice for a few years amongst those seeking a Rolex Submariner homage. However, the model I'd like to present is perhaps their best watch yet, 
and he says expecting to get some serious flack from purists, the best design of the famed Submariner concept to date, including Rolex's efforts. A bold statement I know, but I think one reasonably well grounded in relation to the new Steinhardt Ocean 39 Premium 904. Now that last number is important, because yes, this is the first, to my knowledge, Rolex Submariner homage to be made not from 316L stainless steel, the industry standard, but instead 904L, an alloy originating from the diving bells of Comex in the 1970s and appearing in Omega's original Ploprof dive watches from that period, but more recently in Rolex's entire steel collection. Whilst you're unlikely ever to manage to rust a 316L stainless steel watch, 904L gives enhanced corrosion resistance and luster in exchange for ultimate hardness. More importantly, it's utterly unheard of for 790 euros, particularly when, behind an exhibition case back rated to 300 meters, this watch has a very well decorated Solita SW200 Swiss made automatic movement, which even includes blued screws, perlage, and a bespoke golden rotor, which looks fantastic. In addition to the metallurgical novelty, the 904 is noteworthy because, unlike many Steinhardt products, it isn't quite a budget Rolex Submariner. Instead, it's a product for someone who wishes that Rolex had chosen a different path about 55 years ago. You see, the 904 dispenses with crown guards altogether in the pursuit of purity and versatility, whilst also giving a 369 Explorer dial, something which Rolex will likely never return to with the Submariner. But this isn't any kind of vintage recreation. Instead, it's a comprehensively modern watch, with a fully luminous ceramic bezel insert and tall applied luminous markers. Of course, with Steinhardt you don't get any real heritage or history, and for some the homage nature of the watch is inescapable. Still, I recommend the combination of brilliantly individual specifications, a great movement, and a balance of elegance and toughness makes the Ocean 39 Premium 904 a very wise and certainly interesting choice. Choosing a watch to follow that Steinhardt is a difficult proposition. There are plenty of brands in its vicinity, but all have their failings. Tissot and Hamilton are a bit bland, whilst Oris is growing ever more expensive. Even Yema, the darling of French affordable subaquatic watchmaking, is reportedly having quality control problems. This year, though, a new option has appeared on the market, making one of the best divers under £1,000 an even more exciting option. This is the Satina DS PH500M. Satina, nowadays a lower level member of the Swatch Group, has an absolutely stunning history of diving. Most notably, their dive watches in the 1960s really pushed boundaries after the launch of the DS, double security line, in 1959. This line was noteworthy for pairing water resistance, with a rubber o-ring around the dial and movement to cushion blows which might otherwise damage accuracy. Through the 1960s, these watches became particularly popular amongst divers of the pioneering undersea habitats, such as Sea Lab 2, where Satinas were worn alongside watches from Rolex and Aquastar. Perhaps the crowning achievement of the DS was the use of the DS PH500M, the 500m version, during both Tektite 1 and Tektite 2 missions. These were missions conducted at the very end of the 1960s and the early 70s, which saw divers submerged for extended periods of time, with Tektite 1 lasting for 58 days at 15 meters of depth and focusing on physiological changes, whilst Tektite 2 saw the close involvement of NASA to analyze psychological changes in a closed habitat. It was also the first time a fully female team of saturation divers was used. The modern Satina DS PH500M is remarkably similar to the original in appearance and also takes two key attributes from it. It offers serious diving appeal for a sensible price and reuses the technologies proven by that original piece. Notably, this watch is 43mm across and 15mm thick, somewhat thinner in fact than the original, but perfectly respectable for a watch of this depth rating. It's worth also noting that a lot of that thickness is a product of the bezel, a safety feature from the 1960s counterpart. As you can perhaps tell from the faceted ring above it, used to unscrew the assembly, this bezel has to be pushed down to be turned, a real rarity at this price. This attention to detail doesn't stop outside the case either, because, sure enough, a rubber ring protects the movement from shocks. Speaking of the movement, whilst you don't get the most high-brow piece in the world, the ETA2824 based Powermatic 80 is a clever piece of engineering on a budget. In essence, a venerable Swiss movement has been made more reliably accurate by fixing the balance wheel in place and regulating it purely with variable inertia weights, whilst a 25% drop in beach rate and revised spring barrel paired with a longer mainspring provide a double power reserve of 80 hours. Putting technical details aside for a moment, the aesthetics of this watch have changed somewhat this year, as when launched, this watch was only available in orange as the colour of choice of the Association of German Sports Divers with which this watch was developed. For a summer holiday, an orange dial is quite a piece of kit, but it did limit the appeal and so I'm pleased to say that there is now a black dial available too. The result is a much more traditional appearance 
but also no compromised legibility with correct sword hands and large luminous markers, adding to a rather beautiful crosshair dial. Together you're left with a very difficult package to argue with. It has proper vintage charm, ample pedigree with the support of a large group behind it, and is clearly actually made for a diver. If you look at value for money, the DSPH500M is fantastic, but also oozes charm for its price of £770. Moving away from the vintage charm of the Satina, and towards an offering for those who really like to test their watches, I'd like to suggest a reasonably well-known and not particularly new dive watch, but also one which has become incredibly good value over the last couple of years, the Zinn EZM3. Most of those watching this video will no doubt know about Zinn, the German technical watch brand with industrial and military ties to aviation and diving. Their dive watches are particularly known for immense depth ratings, such as the 1000m U1, 2000m U2, and 5000m UX, which if it weren't for the movement, would have no known crush depth. They're also known for using submarine steel, a corrosion-resistant steel used for the German Navy's submarine fleet. Most recently, though, Zinn has drawn attention to their U50, a 500m smaller version of the U1, with a price of around £2,000. But this brand has another dive watch in its catalogue, which pound for pound is probably the best they make. Priced at €1,590 Euros to the 1990 of the U50, the EZM3 is a member of a totally different family of watch. Whether U50 is one of Zinn's pure dive watches with the crown at 45 degrees, a submarine steel case and an engraved steel bezel, the EZM3 is what Zinn would call an Einsatz Zeitmesser, or mission timer. This means that the watch puts all-round practicality before absolute diving prowess, a good thing when most holidays or even diving trips require most of the time to be spent out of the water and nowhere near 500 metres down. As such, the case design is the less cumbersome one from Zinn's pilot's watches, but seen here with the bezel recessed into its top to prevent damage, something important because an aluminium bezel insert is used instead of hardened steel to increase legibility. The watch also dispenses with the 4 o'clock crown in favour of one at 9 o'clock, because why compromise ease of use if you can just put the crown in a place of absolute safety? Remarkably, we haven't even reached the technologies this watch contains. Aside from a 500 meter water resistance, Zinn chose to use simple 316L stainless steel instead of submarine steel for this watch, in order to, I believe, allow the piece to be anti-magnetic to a thousand gauss. A convenience in an airport, alongside resistance to a negative pressure gradient when, for example, ejecting from a fighter plane. Furthermore, in the spirit of being a mission timer, the watch is guaranteed to remain watertight and accurate between minus 45 and 80 degrees centigrade, an impossibility for most watches with ordinary seals and lubricants. Finally, the EZM3 is also fitted with AR dehumidifying technology, essentially a case filled with inert gas instead of air to prevent moisture damage, whilst any trapped moisture is absorbed by a copper chloride capsule in the case side. Those who remember school chemistry will know that if it turns blue, moisture has been absorbed. In short, the Swiss Salita SW200-1 inside is a very lucky movement to be there. But this watch does much more than just that. If you look at the dial, a sense of clean German calm replaces flair of other models with a matte black base and more easily differentiated hands. A touch which I love is that Zinn have kept the date, but added it in a place where it won't interfere with the markers, while still remaining as level as possible for ease of reading. It's also printed in red on black, like other non-essential dial markings, so as to fade away when at depth, as, at that depth, one only wants the most important features to be usable. Whilst the U50 is the flavour of the moment, I'd choose the similarly sized 40mm EZM3 for a summer holiday, because whether in the sea, on a hike, or flying in a plane, it will always be the tool for the job if you want the ideal, tough dive watch. Finally, we come to the last watch in the video, and what was a bit of a conundrum for me to find. You see, remaining internally consistent with my criteria, there are a few higher-end dive watches which fit the bill, but still remain understated enough to be practical. The new Oris Aquis Calibre 400, for example, is a good choice, but for £2,700, a Tudor Black Bay seems like a much more versatile and frankly prestigious choice. By the same token, the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage is brilliant, but seems rather poor value next to an Omega Seamaster 300M. Problematically, both the Seamaster and Black Bay are not only obvious choices, but also extremely obviously expensive, not necessarily something you want to show. By contrast, the watch I reckon is best is a bit left field, the Seiko Marine Master 300. To those scratching their heads at this point, I understand your confusion. The Seiko Marine Master 300 is not exactly a new watch, in fact it's quite old by most standards, lacks some of the most recent features in the two to three thousand pound price bracket, and depending upon how you look at it, doesn't even exist anymore. But first things first, what is the Seiko Marine Master 300? The Marine Master 300 is the highest rung of conventional, 
unlimited production Seiko dive watches, with many allusions to Seiko's first 300m dive watch, the 61597001 launched in 1968. As such, where almost all other Seiko dive watches have a 200m water resistance, this has a 300m water resistance, with a solid monoblock case which can only be opened from the front to deliver an airtight seal against helium ingress for saturation diving. Where other Seiko dive watches have a movement developed upwards from the basic 7S movement architecture seen in parts since the 70s, the Marine Master 300 uses the 8L35, a higher beat automatic movement derived from Grand Seiko's previous, tougher generation of movements with the addition of a MEMS lightweight escapement. However, in previous years, the Marine Master 300 in its original SPDX001 and later SPDX017 variants were never really suited to widespread appeal. They were only ever available in select markets, used Seiko's Hardlex crystals at a wholly inappropriate price, and had a really beautifully lacquered steel bezel, which was fantastic apart from the fact that it could seemingly be scratched by even the lightest brush on clothing. But make no mistake, this was an utterly superb watch. From the immaculately brushed accents to the Zeratsu mirror-polished flanks, this was a rare pairing of perfect craftsmanship with brilliant technical design, at a price which, frankly, had no competition. Watches costing four or five times the price of this watch still sometimes didn't beat it in terms of finishing and overall quality of appearance. In 2019, however, the Marine Master 300 was radically changed. On the face of things, the changes weren't all that positive. The iconic Marine Master dial text was replaced with the same Prospects X as on a watch five times cheaper. The bezel grew even taller, and the price increased from around £2,000 to £2,800. This, though, would be missing the point. The Marine Master 300 also became available worldwide with an anti-reflective sapphire crystal, a more luminous and mercifully scratch-resistant ceramic bezel insert, and even a blue colorway to match the black. Unfortunately, the subsequent release of at least two other very similar-looking but less expensive Seiko dive watches of the same style has somewhat blunted the market for this watch, but in truth, the movement, finishing and overall package are just in a different league. Even the luminescence, Seiko producing the best across the board, is improved to torched levels of luminosity. The only downside is that at 44.3mm wide by 15.4mm thick, it is too large for some. But why should you choose this piece for your summer over any range of more prestigious Swiss offerings? Because both the black SLA021 and blue SLA023 models, in addition to all the limited edition versions, give you all the classic charm of a Tudor Black Bay, the innovation of Rolex Seadweller, the no-nonsense tool appeal of an Omega Seamaster Ploprof because of this watch's original saturation function, and as near as heck the finishing of Grand Seiko with the anonymity of good old Seiko. Oh, and these days you can find them closer to £2,000 if you shop around. So which of these watches do you think is best for a summer holiday, whether on land or at sea? Let me know in the comments section below, as well as telling me what you intend to take on holiday. Personally, I'm choosing my Aquastar Deep Star, but unfortunately, they're all sold out for now. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe. It really helps to keep the videos coming. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from WatchChronicle.com. Out.